Greetings Python coders. This is Alan D. Moore once again, author of this book. And we're here in our TK Inter Basics series and we've created a small diary app which you can see right over there. It works, it does what it's supposed to, but it needs some improvement. And today we're going to talk about something that could really improve it and that is control variables. So let's go ahead and dig in. Okay, there's a few improvements that I want to make to this application. For one thing, I don't really like the list box. It's not a great control. Um, you can't see all the options at once. So we want to replace that. Another thing that I'd like to do in this application is create a checkbox that will allow me to mark a journal entry as private and encrypt it. Uh, another thing that we'd like to do is since some of the information we're typing in is going to be used to generate a file name. I'd like to know if that file automatically exists as I type so that I can make sure I don't overwrite anything. Also, it was really hard to get the data out of the widgets. It took a lot of effort just to get our category, for example. So we'd like to do something to improve that. So let's go ahead and dig in. Okay, control variables are what we need here. What is a control variable? Now Python has variables. You know we store all kinds of things in Python variables, right? Uh, integers, strings, whatever. So why do we need a different kind of variable? Well, TK inter control variables have lots of superpowers that we can take advantage of in our GUI. For example, we can create a two-way binding with a widget. That means that whenever the variable value gets changed, the widget value gets updated. Or if the widget gets changed, say by a user typing in an entry box, the variable value automatically gets updated. What we can also do is put a trace on the variables so that whenever they get changed, an event is registered and we can tie callbacks to that event. Let's see how that can help us improve our GUI. So first off, I'm going to create a control variable for our subject. And to do that, I'm going to say subject var equals tk.string var. A string var is a variable for holding strings, as you might guess. There's three other kinds of variables. There's an int var for holding integers, a double var for holding float values, and a boolean var for holding true-false values. So once we've created this variable, uh, we can bind it over here to our widget using the text variable argument. So text variable equals subject var. Once that's bound, it means anytime we type in that entry, subject var is going to get updated. Let's do the same thing with category. We'll say cat var equals tk string string var. Now a list box does not work very well with variables um, and I didn't really like the way it looked in our GUI anyway so we're going to change it out for a different widget which actually requires a variable which is why we didn't use it before and that is the option menu. So to create an option menu we actually need to specify a few different positional arguments. This is a little different from most other widgets. We start with the parent which is root, then we need to specify our variable which is going to be cat var, and finally we need to give it some options. Um, and of course we have our categories list up here. I'm just going to use the star to unpack that as positional arguments. Alright, once we've done that we can get rid of this for loop down here because there's no longer an insert method. Okay, now that we've created that, let's go ahead and run this and see how that option menu looks. So as you can see right here, this is a little bit more of a traditional dropdown. We, we click on it and we can choose one of these categories. No real change in the subject yet, uh, the variables kind of behind the scenes there. All right, 
The next thing we want to add is our checkbox for private. Checkboxes, actually, it's called a check button in TK Enter. Um, you can create them without a variable, but they, you can't ever get data out of them without one. So the first thing we do need to do is create a variable. We'll call that private var, and that will be a Boolean var. So if our check button is checked, that'll be true. And if it's unchecked, it'll be false. Now you can specify default values for these variables. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to make that value equals false. It would be anyway, but just to show you. Um, and then we're going to create our check button. That's a tk.check button. Need to give it the parent. And this time it doesn't take a text variable argument, it just takes a variable because it's not text. That'll be private var. Uh, check buttons do have a label built in, so we don't need to create a separate label. We can just use its text argument and we'll say private with a question mark. All right, now we need to close that parentheses and add that to our grid. Put it row two, column zero. And we'll give it some internal padding here. Uh, five is good. All right, we need to move our message down one. You might be wondering what happens if I grid two widgets to the same cell. Well, the one you grid second will just cover up the other one. That's what happens. All right, let's launch that. Give that a look. There it is. All right, very good. Now we come to the text input. Unfortunately, the TK text widget does not accept a variable. And the reason for that is that it has a lot of capabilities that simply can't be represented in a string. For example, it can show pictures or colored text, uh, I think maybe different fonts, things like that. So uh, that's a little bit of a, a bummer, but that's how it is. Um, there are ways to work around that, which is a little more advanced. But for now, we're just going to continue to get the data from it the way we have been. Now for our status bar, which I've added here, we're going to... Now for our status bar, we can also use a string var. So let's say status var equals tk string var. And for our status bar, Instead of saying text, we'll say text variable equals status var. Well, so far, we've just created variables. How do we use them? Let's go down here into the save function. And where I've got subject input.get, I'm just going to change that to subject var dot get. Just like with the widget, you just call the get function and it retrieves the value that's in the variable. Now, don't get confused. I can't just say subject equals subject bar. That'll just give me a reference to the variable object. I need to actually call its get method to get the value. That's a, a common bug that you find as we, we get thinking about variables like Python variables and um, forget to call get. All right, so with our category, we can actually delete all this and just say category equals cat var dot get. Much simpler than finding the selected item and dereferencing that from the list. For our private, we'll say private var dot get. Again, that's the great thing about these variables. Getting the data out is very consistent. And of course, for our message, we still have to use the old way.
So let's deal with our encryption of our message. I can just have an if statement here, if private. And I've got some code here. Actually, we need to go up here and import hashlib. This will just allow us to encrypt our text. We'll say message equals hashlib.md5 uh, message, and that needs to be a bytes object, so we'll call encode on the string, and then we'll return the hex digest. That may be a little out there for some of you. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. It's just an example. Um, this is just going to encode our message as an MD5 string, which is pretty weak encryption, but it's, you know, it'll keep, uh, keep the honest people honest. All right. Let's go ahead and try that. So this will be test one, category hobbies, market private. This is a secret message about my hobbies. And we'll save that. Let's see if we actually saved anything. Yes, we did. There is a file here called hobbies-test1. I'll cat that file. And you can see, maybe you can't see, sorry if the font's a little small. Uh, it's an encrypted string. Okay, there we go. I bumped up the font size a little. And there you go. Now you can see it's an encrypted string. All right, now let's go ahead and fix up the status bar. So the reason we didn't get a status back is because setting the text is no longer going to change anything on the status bar. We actually had to set the status bar, var, sorry, status bar value to a message. And we'll say, yes, message was saved to, we'll put the file name in there. Make that an F string. Save that. Let's run it again. This will be test two. Hobbies, private, another secret message, save. Now we got the message down here at the bottom. Message was saved to hobbies test two. Let's check on our terminal. Cat hobbies test two. Again, it was saved. All right. Okay, now we talked about how we wanted to have a warning if the category and subject we were typing in was a file that already existed. So let's implement that. The first thing we're going to need is a callback function, right? So let's create that callback function under save here. We'll call it check file name. Check if a file name is already in use. So before we can do that, we need to import our old friend pathlib. So import, actually, let's just import path from pathlib, import path. All right, and let's just go ahead to save time. We're going to copy and paste this code up here. that gets the category and subject and then copy the file name code. In a real program, I might abstract that out into its own function so it's only defined in one place. And now let's say if path file name dot exists, we're going to set our status bar to an F string, warning, uh, make it all caps, warning. 
file name already exists. And of course, if it does not, we can set our status to a blank string. So that's our callback. So if we call that, it's going to grab whatever's currently in those variables and it's going to check and see if that file exists. Now how do we get that to be called at the right time? We could have it triggered as part of the save function, but it's kind of annoying to get all the way to hitting save and finding out that you can't use that name. Instead, we can have tkinter trace those variables so that whenever they change, it calls this callback method. The way we do that is we have our variable, so subject var dot trace add. The traces have different modes, which means what kind of situation is this trace going to be fired on? So we can trace it when it's written to, when it's read, or when it's deleted. So we, we care about when it's written to, right? We care about when that variable value is changed. So that's going to be right. And our callback is check file name. And since the category also affects that, we're going to say category var at trace. Sorry, it was cat var. Cat var dot trace add right. And also check file name. One more thing we need to fix here. When tkinter uses trace to do a callback, it's going to send some arguments to that function that's our callback. We don't care about those arguments. They're not useful to us in this situation. But we do need to make sure that our function can handle taking some arguments. So I'm going to go up here and just do star args. And that will just whatever positional args are sent to that function, that variable will just hold them all and we're not going to use them anyway, so we'll just leave it like that. All right, let's give that a shot. So I'm going to try test. Okay. Test two. Good. Now if I change this to hobbies, ah, now I get a warning. Warning, hobbies-test2.txt already exists. What if I change this to health? Now the warning goes away. So let's go ahead and try to save that file. Let's say I feel healthy today. We'll save it. Message was saved. Let's check it in the terminal. All right, I feel healthy today. So variables are pretty powerful in terms of helping us to keep a consistent way of getting to our data and passing data around and actually tracking that data as it changes in our application. One thing you can do if you're using variables is we can actually declutter our code a little bit because we don't actually need to save references to all these widgets. As long as they are child widgets of a parent, there's going to be a reference in memory somewhere to them. So if we don't need to, to refer back to them anymore because we're not pulling data out of them, we can just not save a reference. So for example, I'm going to take out this subject label line and we'll just go ahead and create the label and place it all in one line of code. So I've got TK label and then dot grid. Obviously, you have to do this in one line of code because you don't have a reference anymore to that label. So you can't do it in a, in a second line. Uh, we can do the same with our entry because we're no longer going to be referring to that. We're going to be using the variable. And I'll run that and you'll see we still have our subject. We still have our entry. Say test three, category bills, pay the bill. And it still works because we don't need to save 
references to either of these widgets. Now if you wanted to do something like maybe disable the widget when you know a certain box is checked or something like that you do need a reference to the widget then but this is something that can definitely declutter your code a lot if you're using variables. So anyway that's control variables very important TK intra concept hope you found that helpful and we'll see you again in the next video. Uh, once again please check down in the description you'll see a link to my book Python GUI programming with TK Inter. We'll see you in the next video. God bless.